Okay, another film and television review. I have spent a big chunk of the last weekend catching up with a series called The Last Ship. The scenario for the, the series is that a, a plague virus breaks out in a world, worldwide plague virus, and a U.S. Navy ship has gone into isolation right at the beginning of this to find a cure in an out-of-the-way place in Antarctica. So. For most of season one, they are questing for the cure, elements of the cure. They're finding out what was happening. Uh, while they were in isolation, the world was coming to an end, basically, for a lot of people. And a new world disorder was arising in their absence while they maintain relatively patriotic Navy values. Uh, the show stars uh, Eric Dane who is a guy, as I watch this guy, I would think this, this, this guy probably should have been Captain Kirk instead of Chris Pine in a new series. But Eric, Dines, Eric Dane's older than Chris Pine, and that's what wasn't going to work when they created the backstory for Chris Pine to be the long-term Captain Kirk in a, in a, in a multi, multi-episode multi series. Uh, it has um, an actress by the name of oh let's see she's was this this uh, Rona Mitra yeah no Rona Mitra if you follow the um, Underworld series Underworld Li Rise of the Li Lichens Rona Mitra is kind of the stand-in for uh, Kate Beckinsale very very similar looking British actress Rona Mitra is plays the the sister or the one of the vampires who's who's later killed and and Kate Peckinsale comes along as the look-alike uh, of that so Rona Mitra you, as you watch the uh, last ship you think okay is this Kate Beckinsale knows Rona Mitra looks very similar Rona Mitra is a little bit more serious on the actress side a um, she she's a little bit more mature looking good you know uh, without quite being the eye candy of the show. She's not quite she's good looking, but she's not quite the eye candy of the show. This is this is really an interesting show. Um, the eye candy for the show is a lot of current technology navy stuff. So in that respect it's kind of this navy recruiting series. The real reveals, the heavy stuff, and the thing that really gets you into where their heads are at is in the last two episodes. And that's where we start to really see um, not just a reveal for the show's plot, but also realize that that was produced with the full cooperation of the Defense Department. And you're going to see where some of the real Defense Department intellectual justification would be for a military-based martial law. Because in the last two episodes, that's the big reveal. Now you could fast forward through a lot of stuff leading up to those, and then when you get to those, you're going to see echoes of New Orleans. You're going to see echoes of previous events. Um, you see the great reveal when it turns out that the civilian government may not be the good guys in this. And it's one of the big reveals that ties in with a lot of stuff that Alex Jones talks about and the fact that much of that series was produced with the help and cooperation of the Miami and the Texas uh, film production. This isn't really a Hollywood thing. This is a kind of a Miami, Texas, uh, Eastern uh, Seaboard, Hollywood, uh, Eastern Seaboard film production outfit. That's why the actors, you'll see some crossover actors in there that were from the, um, uh, not the Blacklist, but um, uh, Oh, we'll see in a minute. Ah, Burn Notice. That's the show. You're going to see some of the same people from Burn Notice. In fact, I, I think a lot of the, the, there's a certain production quality. You'll see a lot of the same people involved in in Burn Notice that were involved in uh, this uh, this film, uh, the the last ship. As I look on the IMDb listings, it's hard for me to check and cross reference everything, but I saw a lot of the same quality of film production. The big reveals at the end, in the last two episodes, you see where a lot of people's heads are at and predicting a lot of things. We have the echoes of New Orleans. We have the echoes of the elite survival bunkers and what their plans may be, existing plans of at least portions of the government. 
and let's say the stuff with the underground stuff around Denver Airport. Now, for the sake of the show, I think a lot of this is placed in the eastern seaboard. It has to be within reach of a of a shipyard because a lot of the this is the Navy crew that goes places, and so they're not going to place all these things inland very far. They have to be something that works for the show. But this is a show that's worth watching. Now, there's a lot of post-apocalyptic or SHTF type shows and plots happening right now. We've got Falling Skies. Uh, we had Defiance to some degree. Uh, it does that. Defiance is pretty good. It's kind of like Dead Deadwood plus Avatar. Um, the government's not necessarily good guys, but we get to see some reveals. We get to see some explanations of how a righteous stereotype of, of a righteous military unit would react to a lot of these things. Uh, Eric Dane, I, I think, is a guy who should have been Captain Kirk in a new series, except that there's an age issue. They needed to have Chris Pine at a younger age so that when Chris Pine ages into the part, they can, they can show a progression of storyline with Captain Kirk and the crew maturing as a, as a long-term series, the way we saw the old series go on for a few decades. But er, Eric Dane is this quintessential captain. The crew people, uh, they're bringing Adam Baldwin in on this. Uh, remember Adam Baldwin's previous work with um, uh, some of the uh, Firefly, and uh, you know it kind of gets this idea that you, you know you're going to start seeing some conservative values, not necessarily libertarian values, but some conservative type of you know real, real flag waver Texas type stuff. And uh, with Rona Mitra, of course, she's she's very closely resembles Kate Beckinsale, very similar actress. But there's a little more serious to her, seriousness, a little more sophisticated intelligence with Rona Mitra. And so it was good casting. I think it was really good casting with a lot of this stuff. The uh, the show, I think you could play with your fast forward button when some things get a little bit saucy in there. You play with your fast-forward button. The last two episodes are a big deal. You can catch these on YouTube. Uh, you look up the last ship in the episodes. Season 2 has not been released yet, not as of my video here. Uh, so all you're going to get is a little bit of stuff with Season 2. This is worth watching. I'm not saying it's worth believing in. But we also have to realize that a, a few years ago when production for this began, there was a lot of talk about bird flu and a mutating bird flu and the possibility of it becoming weaponized. I'm working on uh, putting together a script. Survival Tech Nord wanted me to start scripting my videos more carefully about early bioweapon attacks in the United States that were sourced from Cuba and, and how these things have happened and how they were ongoing and why certain elements of it were covered up with the information out there on YouTube. Right now we're, we're dealing with massive poultry die-offs in Texas, Oklahoma, some of the other flyover states. Massive poultry die-offs at the factory farms. Now factory farm chickens tend not to have the immune systems of free-range chickens. But the thing is the bird flu stuff actually had continued to spread. Just not quite at the disaster proportions people thought it was going to. But it's one of those things which has a potential for human crossover. So, for the SHTF plague scenario, it's worth watching. The show also, you know, it gives that nod to the events in New Orleans about what happened or what should have happened and how the reactions were, how they were not, uh, without the commentary that probably should be happening but will happen if more people watch that show, want to comment on it. Um, it's it's interesting, okay. I, I think it's going to be worth paying attention to. You can catch up on the entire show in the course of on and off again watching over the course of a weekend. The episodes tend to be under 40 minutes long as they went on YouTube because they were engineered to have longer and more frequent commercial breaks when they were on network television. Uh, the production of the video you'll get off YouTube is not HD, but it's good enough to get the story. But the last two episodes are the big reveal, and we're going to look forward to season two, which I understand has uh, uh, is is in production. And the uh, first episode of season two is is coming up here in June.